You know, I'm not gonna lie, it still hurts to talk, and it hurts to swallow very much, so I'm not too sure how long this video is going to be. But today we're talking about the Calgary Flames, a rookie on their team, as well as head coach Daryl Sutter, and an interview that Sutter did with the media wherein he was asked about said rookie. Now, I saw the video while I was at the mall. I was eating sushi. It was my breakfast or whatever. I live near the mall, so I'm always there. But, like, I was watching the video, and that was while I was eating, and I was like, oh, here we go. Daryl Sutter interview about the young guy on the team, finally. You know, the Calgary Flames have had themselves a pretty bad problem of not having any youngsters on the squad at all. You talk about Matthew Phillips. You talk about Jakob Pelche, that in whom we are talking about today. But after being, like, I think the only NHL team this season to not play a guy under the age of 22, the Calgary Flames finally played Pelche, and you have Daryl Sutter in the media talking about that process. Let's see what he says. And then the video ended up making me feel pretty uncomfortable, and I was kind of like, okay, huh, that's not what I was expecting at all. In fact, that was so peculiar and weird that I sort of want to make a video about that, but I didn't really know how to approach it. Up until Eric Francis posted an article earlier today talking about how Daryl Sutter's comments about Jakob Pelche were not just regular old comments, but they were mockery. They weren't just bad leadership, but they lacked human decency. Now, okay, I'm gonna say that when I listened to the video myself, I didn't think, oh boy, this lacks human decency, but man, that's some really harsh language from Eric Francis. I definitely do understand the point he's trying to make, though, so without further ado, let's get into the topic here, ladies and gentlemen. Starting out with who Jakob Pelche is and why he's important. Pelche is a 21-year-old player, 5'10", 181, is a left-handed guy. He can play left wing and he can play center. He was drafted 26th overall by the Flames back in 2019. Now, when Pelche was drafted, he was taken out of the Moncton Wildcat system, and he was a very good offensive, explosive player. He wasn't really the guy that had himself, like, the most amazing all-round toolkit, but when it came to the offensive zone, Pelche had pretty good skills, he had a good motor, and a very good snapshot as well. The thing is, though, because QMJHL hockey is QMJHL hockey, Pelche wasn't really noted as being one of the absolute top pinnacle guys in the draft. 2019 was seen by a lot of people as sort of a staple year for the NTDP, for example. You had guys like Hughes and Caulfield and Zegris, Turcotte, Boldy, York, and Spencer Knight all dominating the draft rankings, and the guys in the WHL and Doc and Cousins and Krebs doing their thing, too. The Q didn't really get too much love that year, and as a result, Pelche was sort of ranked to go in the range wherein the Calgary Flames took him in the 26th overall position. It was seen mostly as an appropriate draft landing spot for this guy, but as Pelche's career went on, you saw more and more how this guy just really was able to carry over that offensive touch into higher levels of play. He played for Valdor the next season, 43 points, 28 games played. The season after that, he played in the AHL, his very first year for the Stockton Heat, getting 62 points in 66 games played, 27 goals and 35 assists. An absolute phenom for the Stockton Heat as a rookie in the AHL. The guy was only 20 years old, and already he was a point-per-game player in the American Hockey League. That's not that bad at all. Then you had yourselves this season, where in 31 games played for the Calgary Wranglers, the guy has 34 points, 15 goals, 19 assists. He's been very good. You also have on the Wranglers Matthew Phillips, who has been a very, very productive player for that team as well, one of the best in the entire AHL, pretty much. Phillips is also a young guy, only 24 years old, but he's pretty small, 5'8", 165, and there was already a lot of controversy about whether or not the Flames should be or shouldn't be giving Phillips his opportunity at the NHL. NHL level, but we can talk about Phillips another day. Let's go back over to Pelche because the other day he played himself his very first game in the National Hockey League. It was yesterday afternoon and the guy played against the Tampa Bay Lightning. He didn't get any goals, he didn't get any assists, but whatever, it's fine. Just seeing a guy go out there and play in the National Hockey League for a team that has been so averse to playing young guys this entire year, that's a pretty good move. Not just for him, but for the entire team and the optics, saying that they're giving chances to guys that kind of deserve it at this point. Which is where you have yourselves the comments made by Daryl Sutter. We're going over to the Eric Francis article and reading the transcription as to what Sutter said. Asked about Pelche's NHL debut, Coach Buzzkill decided to put on a show. Yaka Pelche? He repeated while putting on his glasses and grabbing the game sheet. What number is he? 
He then proceeded to read out all the Pelche stats, which included just under 7 minutes of ice time, 43 seconds on the power play, one shot on goal, and one hit. No smile, no acknowledgement of how special it must have been, and no cursory congratulation. It's the NHL, he spat. 21 years old. He's got a long way to go. And included in the article is the actual video of Daryl Sutter himself talking about Pelche, or not even talking about Pelche, just merely acknowledging that Pelche exists. And upon seeing the reaction on Twitter to the moment, because there were a lot of people talking about Daryl Sutter and, hey, like, I mean, that's not cool. Like, sure, you're kind of poking fun at the situation, but, like, the guy just made his NHL debut, and all you can say is that it's going to be a tough road ahead. Like, you can't even be happy for the guy? I know Daryl Sutter has had his problems in the past when it comes to playing young guys because that seems to be something he's very opposed to doing, but when a guy finally enters the lineup, he's still keeping it up, eh? And you had many fans and analysts going out there and saying, man, that's just not cool, Daryl. Come on. And this is where the Eric Francis article comes in because this is what he writes about here. This is how you treat a first-round pick? This is how a leader behaves when asked a simple question about a respectful young man who has done everything the Flames have asked since being drafted in 2019. There's tough love, and then there's human decency. Sutter just can't bring himself to buy into the city's excitement over a young prospect who was on the AHL's all-rookie team last year and was called up two weeks ago as one of the Loop's leading scorers. And yes, he was called up two weeks ago, he just never played until yesterday. It seems to bother the coach that Pelche's two-week stint as a healthy scratch has been the talk of the town. The more fans who want him to get a simple chance, the more defiant Sutter has grown. Having shown endless disdain and frustration with storylines surrounding Pelche and Phillips weeks earlier, it was hardly a coincidence that Sutter chose to send associate coach Kirk Muller to answer the anticipated questions a day earlier when Pelche practiced on the fourth line. What good does it do to diminish an otherwise joyous afternoon for the 5'9", 160-pound winger by making a mockery of the day's feel-good story? Now, there are some more quotes in the article. It's a really good one. I mean, Francis goes out there and takes some big hits, but either way, link in the description if you want to go ahead and read this yourself. I personally, I mean, look, I'm not really the most experienced when it comes to being in a professional hockey locker room. I don't know if any of us are, to be honest. So maybe these coaches just work differently. But at the end of the day, the optics of it, how everything seems to be, sort of a spiteful kind of retaliation to how the city in Calgary has responded to the idea of these young guys playing at all. This Daryl Sutter thing is kind of whack, dude. Not gonna lie. Like, my spidey sense went off when I was watching that video in the first place because I was like, wait a minute, is he kind of, like, diminishing what Pelche is doing here? Is he kind of poking fun at the situation? Not just at the guy, but, like, at the fans for getting so excited over this player? Like, oh, he only had six minutes, he had zero shots, zero goals, 40 seconds of power play time, that's it. That's what I thought of him. He played that. It's a long road ahead. He's a young guy. Like, really? I don't know, man. I'm more on the train of getting smaller, achievable goals and acknowledging goals to make yourself feel good in order to push forward and carry through. But for Daryl Sutter, it's very apparent he is not on the same page at all. So, thoughts in the comment section below about this entire Jakob Pelche thing. Do you think that this was more so just tough love or do you think it lacked human decency like Eric Francis is writing about? My throat is really killing me, so I gotta go. Yeah, I'm going to be done making videos for the rest of the day, but talk to the comments about your thoughts about Pelche, the Calgary Flames, their treatment of young players, etc. I hope you enjoyed this video. And bye.